it's time to do some electron configuration problems. We're going to do a few examples, and I picked some problems that has a few exceptions you should be aware of. In the meantime, while you're getting ready here to see me do the problem, grab your periodic table. And remember, there's two different types of periodic tables. Uh, we're going to use the one that's most helpful to us has lanthanum and actinum up in the D block up here. Okay? So if you can find one of those periodic tables, that'd be ideal. All right, let's give these a try. Phosphorus. Well, I want to look first at the previous noble gas. That's number 10 neon. And again, follow along in your own periodic table. And then you go to the next level. That's the sodium-magnesium level. That's the 3S. So it'd be 3S2. And then you kind of scoot over to the side, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus. There's three of them, so it'd be a 3P3, okay? All right, now let's do one that's a lot further down, bismuth. Okay, for bismuth, the previous noble gas is number 54, xenon. Okay, so let's write that down, xenon. Then after xenon, we go over to cesium and barium. And that's the 6S level. So you have a 6S2. Okay, after that, let's see what you go through. Next, you're going to go through the 5D level. Okay, from lanthanum all the way over to mercury. So that'd be a 5D10. But notice what happens when you do that. Because you're going to go through lanthanum, you're also going to go through all the lanthanides. So you'd have a 4 F14 in this as well. Because notice you're going from number 57 through 71 and then from 72 over to 80. Finally, you're going to go thallium, lead, bismuth. And so that's the, let's see, let me count down which P level that would be. That would be the 6P3. And there you go. There's for bismuth. It's similar to phosphorus in that it's just down in the same column, but we're adding the D's and the F's. All right. Now, let's do an ion, O minus. What you need to realize is when oxygen gains an electron, this will have the same electron configuration as fluorine. So all you have to do is write it down for fluorine and you're good. So for fluorine, that's helium. And then the next level, we got lithium and beryllium. That's the 2s2. And then to go over to fluorine, you're in the 2p row. So from boron all the way over to fluorine, there's five of them. So it's 2p5. All right, let's do silver now. Silver, this is a little bit of a tricky one. We're going to kind of have to write something down and erase it. But silver, the previous noble gas, is krypton number 36. Okay, then you might be tempted to do the following. You would look for uh, the fifth level, rubidium and strontium. That's a 5s2. And then you would count over uh, for silver, and you'd probably write a 4d9. However, this is one of our exceptions. You cannot do that. <laughs> So instead of that, what happens if you're in the transition metals in the fourth or ninth column? That is the chromium column or the copper column. Usually it follows the following, where it half fills the S. So the 5S1 is going to be half filled. And it puts that second S electron in the Ds, 4D10. So this is going to happen anytime your transition metal is in the fourth or ninth column it'll follow this exception. Now, of course, there's exceptions to the exceptions that we're not going to learn, but this is one of the exceptions that you need to know for our class. Okay, next, let's try vanadium 3 plus. All right, let's do it first for vanadium neutral. Vanadium neutral would be, let's see, the previous noble gas is argon. Okay, so we got argon. And then we go to potassium and calcium. That's the 4s2. And then we're in the 3d. We count over 3. 
so it's 3D3. So there's vanadium neutral. Now let's get our eraser out. We don't want neutral. We want vanadium 3 plus. So I have to remove three electrons. And now we're going to come to our second exception because you might think, let me just take off those three and I'll be good. However, the second exception says when you're in the transition metals and you have a cation and you have to remove electrons, you must remove the S's before you remove the D's. Again, you must remove the S's before the D's for a transition metal. So I'd have to remove both of these two and then one more from the D's. So my actual answer would be argon 3D2. I remove the S's and then I start removing the D's. All right, now let's head over to argon. Argon, uh, not argon, the uh, <laughs> uranium, the last one, the previous noble gas is radon. And that's number 86. Uh, then I go over to francium and radium. So that's the 7s2 level. Okay. Now, notice what happens. You would next go to number 89. That's um, actinum. And if you have the right periodic table, that should be the next uh, element coming after radium. And that's actually in the D block. So you would go 4, 5, 6, D, 1. For lanthanum, or for actinum, that's number 89. Then you go to number 90, which is actually down in the F block. And specifically, it's in the 5F block. 5F. And you count over three thorium, protactinium, and then uranium. Uh, So you should get a 7s2, 6d1, 5f3. Now there's a lot of exceptions in here in the f block. I'm not going to have you learn all the possible exceptions. There are a bunch, but this is the general format you would use.